Welcome to Subaru ECU Flash Training Part 28. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with a rally style anti lag in our Carberry ROMs. When we're in a motorsport rally type of environment, when we're going into a corner and you're lifting throttle, when you come back on the throttle, you want the boost to be there. We can utilize a rally anti lag to make sure the turbo is always on boil, always spinning, and it always has pressure so that whether we're on the throttle or off the throttle, we're always going to be in boost. This feature is extremely hard on the engine, but we're going to be taking a look at how to implement this in order to achieve these types of results if you're in a rally type of environment and you need to have your boost there when you're coming back on the throttle. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our rally style anti-lag in our 16-bit Subaru Carberry based ROM files. Our anti-lag feature is going to allow you to generate boost in lift throttle conditions. This is specific for rally cars so that as you're going and coming off of a corner and you're lifting throttle, when you come back on the throttle, you don't have to wait for boost. It's gonna be instantaneous and your power band will essentially be there all the time. This is a definite feature that you could utilize on a road course car or even on a autocross car. But we have to be mindful about implementing this because it's extremely hard on the engine because it's going to essentially retard timing heavily in order to generate boost pressure. It's similar to the idea of working with our launch control where we're actually cutting fuel or spark depending on what we choose. And then we retard the timing heavily to build the boost pressure that we'd like when we're stationary on the launch control feature. The rally anti-lag is used when you're actually moving, so it's gonna be differentiating itself from traditional launch control because we are going to be retarding the timing and implementing this in these mid-corner situations. So this is really focused for motorsports rally type of racing, although again, it can be used in road racing or road course if you wanna have your boost there essentially all the time on live throttle conditions. Now we have to go through a couple things to set up here and some specific things with the rally anti-lag, how it's gonna function, how we wanna program it, in order to successfully implement it. Now I have two different files open here from our course packet. We have our Carberry map SD file. This is the generic speed density based file. And then I also have the Carberry TDO4 SD stock map IT STI pink injector file because I have the rally anti-lag set up a little bit differently in this calibration file compared to the normal default Carberry ROM. We'll find that the way the Carberry ROM is set up with the anti-lag feature here, it's not going to work very well. So we're going to go over what we need to actually utilize. If you don't want to use this particular file, you can copy and paste some settings out of that into your Carberry ROM that you might be building in order to successfully implement this anti-lag type feature. So let's jump in here and talk about what we have to work with in this Carberry anti-lag programming. It's relatively simple. We can see there's only a few tables here to actually deal with. We just need to make sure the conditions are set up properly and everything is going to be uh, dialed in as expected. So moving down here to Carberry anti-lag, we have our master on or off toggle switch. Right now it's set to enable. If you want to have it on, you'll enable it. If you want to have it off, you'll toggle it here to disabled. Now I would recommend if you're building your base file to get started with the tuning process that you have your rally anti-lag here set to the disabled status, even if you plan on using it down the road. We want to make sure all the tuning is done first between the boost control, the fuel, and the spark timing so that we don't have to worry about the anti-lag complicating things and maybe going in and affecting the way the car drives if we're trying to dial in our part throttle cruise style operation. So in this case, if you're building your base file, you'll make sure you set it to disable, but if you're ready to start to activate it and to work with it, we will go and set it to enable. The next thing we have here is our anti-lag input control. We'll find that if we have it to the setting here, always enable, it is always going to be armed and it's always going to be ready to work. So if we want the rally anti-lag uh, so that we don't have to go and toggle a switch on or off to activate it, we'll set it to always enable. This is good for a motorsport specific car. So if you have a rally car and you plan on going and rallying with it all the time, we'll want the anti-lag, the, the rally anti-lag here pretty much enabled all the time. And we'll use our always enabled status. Now we do have other options. We have a defogger switch. We have a headlight switch. We have a TID switch, and then we have an intercooler switch. Either of these ECU inputs can be used with a switch in the car. So either we want to go and wire in an actual toggle switch to the car in order to go and ground out any of those ECU inputs that we might want to work with. Um, 
or if we're taking a look at something like our defogger switch, that's gonna be found on the dash on a Subaru. You can simply just push the button and turn on or off the rally anti-lag utilizing that button function. So we can have a bypass if we wanna just drive around normal driving and then when we wanna actually activate it, we can turn it on with the switch. That's definitely a nice feature. So you may or may not wanna go and have it to either the always enable, that's gonna be really for just pure motorsports or going and having the ability to turn it on or off. And I do wanna mention if you're going in here and you're using something like your TID switch to turn on or off or rally anti-lag, we'll find that if you're just turning on a basic toggle switch or wiring in a basic toggle switch where one leg goes to ground and the other leg would go to the ECU input pin, which in this case for a TID switch would be pin E1, we'll find in that situation we'd have to go and actually set it to the inverted status. So we can see here inverted defogger switch. Looking at this, we see that that's an inverted status. Typically, any of these inputs that we're looking at here typically need to be inverted that's going to be inverting the way the ECU logic is going to be looking and, and, and working with that switched input, we can actually test the status of what's going on with the particular input that we're working with, depending on what we choose here as far as the uh, input control. And we jump into ROM Raider here, and we go... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.